I'm assuming that's the child. Because everyone is freaking out along with her crying. Cassia, yeah, Lady Cassia. The pale figure with unnaturally long limbs covers her face with her hands, which are deformed with talon-like nails. Her deathly pale face is coated with blood that continually streams from her scarlet misted eyes. Her spiny gills, slightly hidden underneath her disheveled hair, twitch nervously at your approach. Only now do you notice the third eye on the young woman's forehead, hidden by a jeweled ornament. And when you, your eyes meet, you sense overwhelming soul-smothering power. As the otherworldly creature's gaze slides over you, your entire core shudders in terror. Flashes of past warp nightmares reemerge from the shadows of your memory and paralyze your will. You gasp for air in terror, drowning under the crashing wave of pain. You cannot catch your breath. Hot tears burn your cheeks. Why is this happening? Why is it happening to you? Why do you feel so lonely and in so much pain? Do these feelings even belong to you? A deer emits something between a moan and a drawn out whimper. Ow, ow, ow. As if my own little pals weren't bad enough, now this one's barging into my head. Somebody stop her. Heresy. Argenta looks at the tall figure with a strange mixture of anger and sadness. Then she lowers her head and her white hair veils her face. Avalodge is this? What vile creature is this? Argenta, rid this world of this heresy? Requires iconoclast, which we don't have. Persuasion 75, Lady Cassia, I'm here to help you. Please calm yourself. Coercion 75, by the Emperor, if you do not stop your sorcery immediately, I will shoot you in the head. Whoa! Wounder, stop this sorcery now, or just attack. Abelard, is this? Lady Cassia, I presume. Seneschal stares at the Lady Navigator's direction with a faraway look, then turns sharply away and awkwardly wipes his eye. Uh, definitely not that. We've got a 100% chance to succeed having Abelard persuade or a 100% chance to have Abelard coerce. We will command Abelard to persuade her to calm her down. Lady Cassie, I'm here to help you. Please calm yourself. Persuasion test succeeded. She warily shakes her head and lets out a drawn out sound similar to both a sob and a howl of a small wounded animal. What is happening? Was someone calling my name? Are all the betrayers dead already? And you, who are you? Ignatius von Valencius, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm looking for a navigator to join my crew and you, crew and you look like you'll do. It matters little, you profane creature. You will die regardless. Finally remain silent or you girl will address me as your lordship rogue trader. I mean, she's a noble. We're not going to... We're obviously on a higher level being a rogue trader, but still, to just say, you girl, <laughs> may address me as your lordship, it's just crazy. Ignatius von Valencius, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Unease settles over her features as she nods cautiously. Pardon my manners, Ignatius. I did not expect to make such a gracious acquaintance in such a time of great sorrow for our house. What is this? I feel faint. I assume they were trying to catch her and failed. The heavy set old man who has been kneeling nearby erupts into low sobs. His eyes swollen from crying dart desperately around the room as though the veil of ignorance has just been ripped away from them. The child, Lady Cassia, where are you? Sacred child, throne preserve. Despite his venerable age, the navigator leaps up and rushes to the young woman's side. You, the old man shifts, revealing his face to you. It is threaded with jet black veins and his bulging milky eyes bear a striking resemblance to those of a dead fish. A sickly sweet scent assaults your nostrils as if the old man's flesh is rotting inside his decaying husk. My eyes fail me, for they are unable to make you out as either enemy or ally. I'm warning you, one wrong move will bring the wrath of House Orsilio down upon your head. So Adira did have that prophecy that said that of the two keepers, one was blind and one was a traitor. This one's clearly blind, so we looks like guessed correctly. It was an educated guess that the other guy was the traitor. Watch out, Lord Captain. This one's so deranged, it's making the whispers shriek like crazy. He might just open that eye of his. Threatening the head of the dynasty is a grave offense, esteemed whoever you are. Everlife places a hand on his weapon. 
Persuasion. At present, I'm trying to determine what is happening at Yurk 5. Co commerce? I mean you no harm. I came to seek Navigator's aid. I have already dispatched Felek. Do you want to follow him? How's our commerce? Also, we get 100%. No, I'm, at present, I'm trying to determine what is happening here on Yurk 5. I'll grant you that grant that you do not look like pirates who have come coveting the riches of our ex station or like scoundrels in Felix service, so who are you? Doesn't matter what my name is, Ignatius von Valencius, rogue trader. Abelard introduce us. To you old man I'm <laughs> Again, the nobles. To you old man, I'm your lordship rogue trader. Abelard introduce us. You're the Seneschal after all. His lordship rogue trader Ignatius von Valencius, heir to the great Greatest protectorate in the Cronus Expanse and bearer of the sacred warrant of trade extends his greetings. Another rogue trader in our corner of the galaxy. How interesting. Your kind always make an appearance in desperate times, ready to cut a deal that benefits one side alone. I mean, yeah. Given that you have not so far drawn your weapons, your intentions are probably peaceful. And so House Orsilio now asks a service of you. Save the life of the child in exchange for future cooperation. Do not hurry to answer. Think on it. You can make yourself an ally or an enemy of our house today. You decide. What is the curse that has taken hold of everyone in this room? You look frightening. What service do you ask of me? I want to know what happened between you and Felic. I think that's a good starting point. Felic is my wayward student. He came to York 5 as a callow youth. I personally mentored him and entrusted him with the care of the child. He was like a son to me, but he proved to be just another traitor. He sought to steal our most precious treasure, the heir of our house, our sacred child, to revel in power with others like him, casting our house into the abyss to pervert the centuries-long traditions of our family. You can see the fruits of his villainy for yourself. He decided he was not bound by his duties to the legacy of, our, of the greatest of our novator. Novators? A patriarch or matriarch that rules over Navigator House, the figurative and often biological father or mother of the dynasty. To Siphony or Celio, who led our house to prosperity for countless years, foolish boy. The renegades clouded his mind. They sought to seize control of, of the dynasty before the sacred child had come of age and taken up the, navi the novita Novator's throne. Not a word I'm familiar with. <laughs> Attack. Felic was right, you're a crazy old man and deserve death. Uh, Felic accused you of treachery, Theobald. Why should I trust your words? Defending myself before strangers, I never thought I would fall so low. The old man looks at the unmoving Cassie and shakes his head in resignation. If the child's life were not at stake, very well, I have no choice or proof of my innocence. I can give you my word as a member of the Navis Nobilite, if the honest word of an honorable man counts for anything with you. I guard this station against the calamity and incursions from without to the best of my ability. I force the wardens to strictly observe security protocols. I personally selected every servant. I faithfully protected the child during the coup. Yeah, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. How'd you lose control of your own station? Do not thrust my errors in my face. I am twice your age and twice as wise. Take my advice. Trust no one but yourself and the emperor. Even the closest to you will betray you for gold, power, or a far-fetched idea of a bright future. Alright, then what is this curse that's taking hold of everyone in this room? Theobald frowns. Curse? You do not understand the sacred gift given to our child. When the child is sad, we all weep. When the child smiles, we all laugh giddily. And if the child wants blood, the world turns crimson. The child's will is the will of the great Tisiphone, for she is the heir of House Orsilio. And they call me dangerous with my witchcraft, Adira mutters under her breath. Yeah. Like, navigators are useful, but if they control the emotions of everyone around them, that does not sound like a blessing. That sounds like a curse. I'm not going to tell him he looks frightening. He looks like a navigator. They all look a little off. What service do you ask of me? Hope glimmers in the navigator's milky eyes. Save the sacred child. Take her away from the station. I fear I do not have long left. A bluish rivulet trickles down the old man's chin, and he wipes the mutated blood brusquely away with his sleeve. 
You glimpse strange burns covering his flesh under his clothing. The slice movement must be causing him unbearable pain. Save the child. Deliver her safely to Regent Aranto, acting head of House Orsilio in the Cronus Expanse. Rest assured that the reward will be worth your effort. I know we came here for a navigator, but after everything we've seen, I've got some reservations about this girl. Argenta looks at Cassia, and a painful furrow appears on her brow. It's such a fragile thing with such a heavy burden upon her shoulders. And you're talking as though you expect to die here. Theobald shrugs indifferently. My service to the house is coming to an end. The wounds Felic inflicted on my flesh will never heal. I'm dying. Praise the throne slowly enough to see the child is taken care of. You need help. There's a Medicaid deck on my ship. There's also a Medicaid downstairs. But Theobald only shakes his head. No, I am the keeper of York 5 and I will perish along with my station. On that note, I have other matters to attend to. I believe I've made my decision. Is that so? Please share your thoughts. Cassia, come with me. <laughs> Again, the attack. Last thing I need is a monster on my ship. Cassia shall remain here and you shall serve as my navigator on my vessel while you still live. No. Cassia shall come with me. Good, that is good. The old man nervously licks his lips. But do allow us to say our proper farewells. Be bold. Wake up, my oh. mistress. My sacred child. It is all over now. It is over. Theobald coughs up more bluish blood. It stains the armor plate on his chest, but he remains standing. What? What happened? You. I remember you. Have you come to save us? You feel the crimson eyes roving over your face. Child, please listen to me very carefully. One last time. You will now embark on a voyage with this lord to rejoin the house and its regent in the Corollas Expanse. <coughs> I, I will not be able to accompany you on this journey. The old man bends over in pain and wheezes hoarsely. Another trickle of blue blood runs down the old man's face, this time from his nose and ear. You have that much internal bleeding? That's a really bad sign. No, not you too. Don't leave me alone in this violet brown haze. You, you're coming with me. Your mistress is giving you an order. Do you hear me? A hot wave of despair that is not yours washes over you. Your palms sweat and your heart freezes in panic. Mistress. I fear this will be your only order that I dare to disobey. I am the keeper of Urak 5, and alas, I have less than a day left in me. Allow me to serve you one last time and honor my final duty to House Orsenio. I will remain on the station and destroy the secrets it holds. <gasps> oh, Theobald. The crimson tears stain the Lady Navigator's white skin once again, but this time her power does not make everyone weep along with her. Regret that we had to meet under such circumstances. Enough tears are coming with me now. Forgive the urgency, but we should leave the station immediately. The systems are unstable and may fail at any moment. No, I, I regret that we had to meet under such circumstances. What need have I for your regrets? I... I just want things to go back to the way they were before. Cassie looks sorrowfully at the destruction around her. Well, I can't help you with that. They got destroyed before I got here. What? Um, what are you going to do to me? If you wish to leave the station alive, you must first sign a contract. You will undertake a serve. You will undertake to serve as my navigator until I release you from that obligation. Lady Cassie, I, Ignatius von Valencius, rogue trader of the Imperium of Man, offer you my protection and grant you shelter aboard my vessel. Or Lady Cassia, let us aid one another. Become my nav navigator and I shall restore you to House Orsilio at the earliest opportunity. Yeah. 
Interesting. Three very different, but all good answers. The sign a contract is the very pragmatic, I'm a rogue trader doing business, and this is just a business transaction. Because, again, for a rogue trader, people's lives are business. Um, offering her protection and shelter, where well, we're not saying... I mean, obviously, she's going to serve as our na navigator, but we're not saying you are the navigator, like, you're in service to me. Instead, it's, no, you're... I'm offering you protection. And during that protection, yeah, you'll be my navigator and whatnot, but primarily, I'm here to help you. This seems to be the vibe of option two. Option three, let us aid one another, become a navigator, and I will restore your house. Earliest opportunity? I don't know about that. I mean, depending on how you define earliest opportunity, we're not going to rush there, but we might make it a reasonably early effort to try and get her to... House Orcilio. Though, we still need a navigator. So if we take her to House Orcilio, if she leaves there, they better give us another navigator in her place. But they are a noble house of navigators, so they would have another option. Presumably. Yeah. I think I like three the best. We're not forcing them into a contract after their civil war when they have no options. But also it's not me bending over backwards of I'm doing everything I can to help you. Just we'll help each other. So yeah, Lady Cassie, let's aid one another. Become my navigator and I shall restore you to your house or Cilio at the earliest opportunity. is to come child you are ready to guide any vessel i know this because i taught you myself and it is difficult to imagine more worthy company than a rogue trader but remember your safety is of paramount importance get to the great regent and fulfill your destiny i mean that's a fair point Navigators are needed on any ship that travels through the Immaterium. And so... They're in high demand, but she's lucky enough that the ship she gets to travel on is a rogue trader's vessel, which is, you know, top of the line, best of the best. Even though we are a unknown rogue trader ourselves, our dynasty is well known. I beg your pardon. But what about my servants? Yurak 5 is still full of people loyal to House Orcelio. You can secure new servants once we're out of here. All who can be saved will be given succor on board my ship. I'll provide you with every necessity. Naturally, this includes servants. No, we... We're still dealing with the fact that we are down on people. So... Due to uh, Kunrad's betrayal and all that. So if you've got loyal people that you will speak for? Sure, they can come on board. All who can be saved will be given sucker on board my ship. <sighs> Lady Navigator ponders your words for a short while. Accompanying a rogue trader on their travels is an honor for any navigator. Let us go. I can no longer bear the sight of the deathly pale shadows that drape the bodies of the fallen. Cassie gives you a curt nod. All right, we're going to check out everything in this room. Let's start with Cassia. Does something trouble you, Lord oh, Captain? Oh, we can't talk to her because she's part of our party now. I was suspecting she would be a party member, and the fact that she is up here makes me pretty confident that she is. What do we know about you? You are dogmatic. Are you? Okay. So she is Devoted to the Emperor. I kind of expected her to be Iconoclast. But she's... We never actually looked at the various ranks. So rank one follower. So when something says you need to be 
follower. That just means rank one. Two is adherent, three is votary. Is that the same on all of them? Follower, adherent, votary, yes. Rank four is fanatic, rank five is zealot. Based on the naming they're giving, it definitely sounds like you're going very extreme when you get down to these levels. Like, oh yeah, I'm a follower of Dogmatic, I follow the God Emperor. I adhere to the teachings of the God Emperor. It still sounds totally fine and normal. But Votary, going on to Fanatic, going on to Zealot, those are strong terms usually used for you've taken it too far. Her awareness is incredible. 60? Cool. What is your archetype? You are an officer. Officer was what Adira was? No, she's an operative. Do we not have an officer? Warrior, operative, soldier. Yeah, you're actually our first officer. Neat. So that gives you as your key ability, bring it down and voice of command. Officers use their willpower and fellowship to improve combat capabilities of their allies, turning them into even greater threats on the battlefield. Core focuses extra turns, single target buffs, rescuing allies, and momentum. So her focus is going to be on boosting the rest of us to be better. On an origin slash homeworld? I think we know her origin homeworld is here. York 5. Origin Navigator. So she has voice of command. The officer forces an ally to push, to fully push themselves, increasing their characteristics by plus 14 for a round. How do you calculate that 14? 10 plus the officer's fellowship bonus. Okay. Her fellowship isn't amazing compared to perception of willpower, but still pretty good. Additionally, all of the officer's abilities can be applied to the target of the voice of command from any distance character who becomes the target of the voice of command cannot be targeted by this ability for the next two rounds. So for one round, you super boost one person and you can use all of your abilities on them even if they're outside of normal distance. Bring it down. The officer immediately grants the ally an extra turn with two AP and no MP. Uh, so they can't move? Ugh. I guess that's fine. If the ally is under the effects of voice of command, okay, and kills an enemy before the end of the officer's turn, the ally gains a one-time additional plus eight momentum. This ability cannot be used on the same ally more than once per round. Finest hour, the officer grants an ally an extra turn with full AP and MP. During the extra turn, there's no attack limit. No attack limit. That's cool. That's, oh, that's our heroic act. And then desperate measure. No attack limit. Until the end of combat, the officer's fellowship is halved. And then you also have lidless stare as a navigator. All creatures in a cone in front of the navigator suffer from 11 to 14 damage. The affected target must pass a plus 30 bonus willpower resistance test or become stunned for one turn. A plus 30? So, reasonably easy willpower test. And this would end all of her movement and actions. Okay. Talents, officer. Yes, finest hour. Officer grants the ally an extra turn. Inspire courage. Whenever the officer targets an ally with an ability for the first time in a round, that ally gains five temporary wounds. Dogmatic follower. Belief in the holiness and infallibility of the laws of the Imperium. Adherence to precepts the god emperor and holy chosen ones carrying out his will to the ignorant and unruly masses unfettered hatred of the enemies of mankind be they traitors heretics xenos or servants of chaos data deleted classified missing <laughs> your navigator those are your ship abilities okay Biography. At some point, I should probably read the biographies of all of our teammates. So that's all that she has so far, and she just gained two more levels to catch up to us. 
So characteristic, we could give her fellowship to boost her officer stuff. It wouldn't get it to uh, the uh, whole number, so it wouldn't actually boost her bonus yet. Or willpower. Is willpower what's used for your navigator stuff? Yes, willpower bonus, willpower resistance. But probably navigator stuff needs willpower versus these officer things are predominantly going to be based on fellowship. This part of me is like, well, we want to boost her navigator stuff because that's special. But also, fellowship is lower. Can we see what other talents you have? Common talents. So... This is not going to be... Yeah, you're not getting any special talents here. No, you do have special navigator-only stuff. Okay. But you're not getting officer talents here at this level. Well, I think for now I'm going to go with willpower because that will change the 55 up to a 60, giving us a, a better willpower bonus. Then we have to decide what we do here. Enemies damaged by the navigator suffer a plus 10% additional damage from any source of warp damage. The bonus damage stacks for each hit inflicted by the navigator. This effect stacks up to five times. We have two psychers doing warp damage. So that would boost our attacks. Particularly if she does like the open the third eye, which looked like it was a giant cone of damage to hit multiple enemies. And then they all are suffering additional damage from psychers. Every even turn, second, fourth, etc., the navigator gains an additional attack action point. Every odd turn, the navigator gains plus 20 perception. Probably not. I don't like things where I've got to keep track of what turn I'm on to know what bonuses I'm going to have to be able to calculate which turns I should do different things. I'd rather just have my characters be a certain level of power always available. Every enemy the navigator has in their line of sight has its dodge and hit chance reduced by 5. Okay. Navigator starts all turns including extra turns with plus three additional movement points. First ally targeted by the navigator with single target ability. Each turn gains the same amount of additional movement points at the start of their next turn. That's cool. I don't know how much she needs to move around. I guess we'll have to uh, see. But if she's mainly standing in the back calling out bonuses to people, I don't think movement's critical for her. But if she does have a lot of cool navigator abilities, like that third eye blast, then it might be worthwhile to give her the movement to get into good positions. Master of Time. Whenever an ally in combat gains an extra turn, the navigator gains a stacking plus five bonus to willpower until the end of combat. Stacks up to five times. So if we're giving out a lot of extra turns, she could have a huge willpower bonus, which boosts both her officer and navigator abilities. Might never matter. The navigator makes all resistance tests with their willpower. If it's higher than the base characteristics for such a test, the navigator's willpower. If the navigator's willpower is higher than their toughness, the navigator's wounds are calculated according to their willpower. So... Yeah, making her tougher based on her willpower and resisting resistance tests also being based on willpower. Since her willpower is her highest stat, that sounds pretty good to me. Open to the warp. Enemies affecting, affected by the navigator's power suffer a stacking minus 10 penalty to the next resistance test from the navigator's powers. Penalty is lost after such tests made. 
navigator's perception is higher than their agility. Their dodge is calculated by perception instead. Also cool. These make her more survivable. Careless ways. Enemies moved by the navigator's powers suffer four damage at the end of movement. Damage increases by plus one for every cell the enemy moves. We don't have any ways of moving enemies that I know of, so that's not needed at the moment. Whenever the navigator uses a navigator power, veil degradation is reduced by one. Veil degradation is already perfectly fine because our psychers have cool abilities. Navigator heals six wounds at the beginning of every turn and gains plus one additional wound for every navigator talent taken. The healing increased, increases by plus one for every creature killed in between the navigator's turns. Wow. Just wow. If we run to a point where she seems to get attacked a lot, which I don't think is her position in combat, then that could be very powerful to just keep her healthy. When the navigator uses the navigator power that has not been used this combat, the navigator takes plus two, gains plus two perception until the end of combat. That sounds pretty terrible. Whenever an enemy fails a resistance test against the navigator's power, attack, attacks against them gain plus 30% critical chance. The effect stacks, but is reset by critical hit. Navigator Pals deal plus one additional damage for every five bonus characteristics of the navigator. Currently equipped staff. Castigating, infusing, and devastating count as characteristics for this talent. We did have that castigating staff. What is castigating in this case? Castigating. Ends become they become targets of the navigator's power, suffer a penalty to all their characteristics equal to the castigating parameter. Okay, so yeah, we have that castigating staff. She might have her own staff already anyway. Something to keep in mind, maybe. Till the end of combat, enemies damaged by the navigator suffer an additional plus five damage from all attacks of opportunity and cannot dodge them. Whenever, while under the effect of any navigator's power, enemies have their armor reduced by 11. Reduction is increased by the devastating parameter of the navigator staff, but does not stack. Allies that are targeted by the navigator's abilities gain plus five to all resistance tests against warp effects caused by demons, psychic powers, navigator powers, etc. until the end of combat. Are they specifically targeted by navigator's abilities and the navigator's abilities? So is it any ability? So she uses her uh, officer abilities. On an ally, they gain plus five resistance to warp effects. Not sure. Navigator gains plus five fellowship and a pl additional plus one fellowship for every navigator talent, the navigator power taken. So this just suddenly boosts our fellowship. Allies that are targeted by the navigator's powers gain at plus 10% armor. This additional armor is reduced by the amount of veil degradation to a minimum of zero, increasing increased by the infusing parameter of the currently equipped navigator staff. Well, we should have the zero veil de degradation basically always. So she can just give someone plus 10% armor. I want, so her purpose in combat, as I understand it, is to boost our allies. So as much as I like things that boost herself, because they do seem nice, I would rather things that aid our allies. But I don't remember which ones are necessarily the best. It's the problem reading all the way through this and then it's like, oh, I can't remember what's good.
could also just put a point in the character trainings to just keep boosting our characteristics. <laughs> There's something to be said for that, but probably not. I think I'm going to go with Blood Augury. Enemies damaged by the Navigator suffer a 10% additional damage from any source of warp damage. Just allows her to make it so that our two psychers do even more damage. Uh, does warp damage also count for the Navigator's damage as well? Does it make her future attacks do more? I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. So then we get another talent here. And this is... I think our full list rather than this minor list we had before. We've got all of our characteristics, skills, etc. there. Those are the ones we already read. Although it's possible there's some new ones as we leveled up. Blood of Martyrs. Whenever an ally uses a heroic act, that ally gains temporary wounds equal to 10% of their maximum wounds. Plus 6. We don't use the heroic acts very often. Commanding voice. The range of the officer's ability is increased by plus 3. The range of voice of command is increased by plus 6. An interesting option. Focus. Whenever an officer uses an ability on an ally, that ally gains a bonus to their perception and ballistic skill equal to four. These bonuses stack, but half of the stack rounded up are lost at the end of the target's turn. So it's just a temporary boost of four to ballistic skill and perception. I don't think that's worth it. Whenever the officer targets an ally with an action, an ability or an attack, that ally's resolve is increased by plus one. The effect stack and is prolonged until the end of the officer's next turn each time it stacks. Officer's resolve is increased by three. Whenever an ally is affected by an officer's ability or talent that grants temporary wounds, the ally's armor is increased by 10% for one round. Allies under the effects of the officer's abilities gain a bonus to their weapon skill equal to seven and will deal plus four more damage on attacks or opportunity until the start of the officer's next turn. That only helps Abelard at the moment, because he's the only one dealing weapon skill attacks. Whenever the officer uses voice of command or bring it down, for the first time in combat, the ability costs one less AP. Meh. Whenever a heroic act is used in combat by any character, the officer's next attack will cost zero AP. Allies affected by the officer's abilities gain bonus to all resistance tests equal to 12 for the rest of combat? Or while the abilities are in effect? Probably while the abilities are in effect. Half of the bonus gained by voice of command remains until the end of combat. This bonus does not stack with itself or with bonuses granted by voice of command, but does count as an officer's ability effect for the purpose of other talent effects. Note the target of lasting impressions does not count as having the voice of command effect. They only gain bonuses to their characteristics. Okay. Now this one is interesting. So she uses voice of command. It's that. Yeah. Increases all characteristics by 14 for one round. So lasting impression means that for the rest of combat, they would keep a plus seven. But more importantly, it counts as having an ability on them. So all these other abilities that take effect when an ally has an ability on them means it would stay. So if she just does voice of command on a bunch of people at the start of combat, then anything else she does would just be better. That's definitely a strong maybe. Whenever the officer uses two... I'll just click it for now. 
Whenever the officer uses two officer archetype abilities that do not grant an extra turn in one round, the officer gains the stand witness effect. Stand witness, the next officer archetype ability that does not grant an extra turn will also affect the officer. Okay. Leader's Assault, whenever the officer makes an attack, they gain plus five fellowship until the end of combat. March, whenever the officer's ability moves any target, the officer gains movement points equal to half the distance the target moved. If this happens on another character's turn, the officer will gain these movement points on their next turn. Whenever the officer's ability grants an action point to an ally, the ally also gains plus one to all characteristics for every action point gained until the end of combat. Whenever ally starts its turn, including any extra turn adjacent to the officer, that ally gains additional MP equal to 2. Eh. Anyone that we're wanting to move around a lot is probably not going to be standing next to the officer very often. So that additional plus 2 movement points might kick off a couple of times in combat at best. The officer and allies with the voice of command effect deal an additional 14% damage to enemies that have not yet acted this combat. That's also cool. An ability to alpha strike enemies. Although specifically just for the officer and anyone. So if she goes early in the initiative before a lot of enemies and then uses voice of command on someone else who's also going early in initiative, this is powerful. But that is a bit specialized. We can't really guarantee that she's going to be early on in the initiative. Although, depends on what her agility is, which I don't remember. 30, not great. Uh, undaunted. Officer gains plus 10 willpower and plus 10 fellowship when they have less than 50% of their maximum wounds remaining. They also gain an additional plus 10 willpower and plus 10 fellowship after using any officer ability on a target with less than 50% wounds for one round. Those two sets of bonuses stack with each other, but do not stack with themselves. The officer can only have up to plus 20 willpower and plus 20 fellowship granted by this talent at any given time. I don't know about keeping her at low health for long periods. But no, I like this lasting impression. She uses voice of command, which I think she's going to be using a lot. Giving plus 14, changing into plus 7 will be good. And then allowing that to trigger other things later on will be powerful. Hopefully. Okay, we're back to the same question as last time. Last time we boosted her willpower, getting it from 55 to 60. Although it's still showing... 55 here. Did it not take into effect that we grabbed it here until we actually finished confirming? Who knows? Uh, but our willpower is 60. Our perception is 55. So there's something to be said about choosing perception, even though it's not one of the recommended ones, just to get it to a whole number. But none of her abilities are based off of perception, so getting her perception bonus to a whole number probably doesn't matter. I'm inclined to go Fellowship, actually. Even though it won't boost us here, it's quite low and a lot of her officer abilities are based on it. So next level, we'll be able to get that up. Or next time we get a characteristic bonus which seems pretty far away. Is it all the way to here? Ugh. I don't know all the symbols yet, but I think that's our characteristic bonus. If we go back... No, I can't uncheck it in order to see what the symbol looked like beforehand. I'm assuming it's this, so it's going to be several levels, actually, before we can get our fellowship up, but it's still fine. I think that's a good level for her. Yeah, willpower up to 60, perception up to 55. Well, perception still at 55, fellowship up to 45. 
And that awareness of 60 is super good. Uh, the various skills like logic, tech use, etc. that we medicate, that we don't have anyone to cover, we still don't have anyone to cover. Because <laughs> she is not covering those. That's fine. Anyway, that's that all out of the way. Let's talk to the guard commander. The servant opens her mouth in prayer and you see the stub of a mutilated tongue. That is... A choice. It is as if the painting was rendered by several different hands. The timid, uncertain lines are... Uh, interlaced with rough and furious strokes coming together in arcane shapes. While no one appears to be living in the cage, somebody still f filled the trough with dried fruit and fresh water. Alright, Medicaid. Uh, are we staying on the station? But isn't it about to... Uh, if Cassie vouches for you, you're welcome on my ship. I already said so. Goodbye, mistress. The child's safety is paramount. Glory to House Orsilio. Anyone else? Another various defenders. Lots of defenders. That all have their tongues removed. Nothing lootable. The Lady Navigator's private library is brimming with essays, novels, and personal accounts from the trailblazers and explorers of the Imperium. To the stars. Ooh, we've got some goods over here. Just money. Ancient Rosarius pieces. Collection of auto quills. Collection of blasphemous litanies. Okay. And a solemn reliquary. The luxurious feast was left untouched. And it looks like that is everything up here. Back to the lower levels. I don't think there's anything left to do here. It's possible that some new options will show up here because we have Cassia with us now, but I doubt it. So we'll just head back to our ship. I wonder if Cassie is going to hang out in the Navigator Sanctum or if she'll hang out, hang out on the deck usually. Like, where we'll find her to talk to her. Well, this is where she is now. <laughs> Vox Master Vidges. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator, welcome aboard. The Sanctum Navis has been prepared for the communion ritual, but if the Lady Navigator wishes to rest in her quarters first... Your heart starts beating furiously, your breaths come short and choppy, and your fingertips tingle unpleasantly. You notice that Vigidus is shivering slightly, and the crew are glancing around in puzzlement, searching for the source of this sudden wave of unease. You decide not to make use of the charm that could inhibit Cassia or Dili or Cilio's power. Uh, I don't remember having that option. But sure. I'm sure it's fine. Without even looking at the Vox Master, Cassia waves her away. First, I wish to speak with the rogue trader. Leave us. Uh, of course. And when you're ready for the ritual, please let me know. Cassia sweeps her pensive gaze over Vigdis, then lowers her lashes slightly, to turns to you. What do you wish to speak about? Tell me about what the ritual entails. First, you will do your duty as navigator. All other conversations can wait. I do not want to speak to you. Go to the Sanctum Navis now. Now. Uh, what do you wish to speak about? After a few seconds hesitation, Cassia lets out a small exhale and then raises her pointed chin. I've not thanked you. Uh, not yet thanked you for saving me on the station. My thoughts were clouded with such a mournful ash... With so mournful ash when Theobald's heart stopped, but you acted honorably and did not exploit me in my wretched position, and for that I am immensely, immeasurably grateful. 
I'm also deeply grateful that you saved my servants, especially my valet. Oof served on the station for many, for more than five years, much longer than any who preceded him. He knows how to properly attend to me during journeys through the Immaterium, and what to serve me for breakfast. His presence envelops me in a cloak of amber. But now, Cassie throws back her shoulders, I am ready to go to the Sanctum Navis and perform the sacred rite. I require brushes, canvas, and the best paints you have on board, but no red. Why are you asking for these items? Now is not the time to indulge in painting. Tell me more about the ritual entails. Why do you refuse red paint? I shall ensure the necessary supplies are delivered. No, I couldn't waste time satisfying these whims. Perform the ritual immediately. For all we know, the ritual involves the brushes and canvas. Uh, why are you asking for these items? Now is not the time to indulge in painting. You are asking questions, the answers of which you cannot comprehend. Perhaps I may explain it all to you at a later time, but now our time is too precious to waste. As a navigator of House Arcilio, I give you my word that without canvas and paint, we have little hope of a smooth journey through the warp. I have no reason to lie. Well, tell me about what the ritual entails. I doubt the uninitiated could understand the mysteries of navigation, but I shall try to explain the essence of it. I must merge my mind and will with the machine spirit of the ship, so that I become one with the vessel. Cassia lifts a lock of hair from the back of her neck, revealing a gilded revealing gilded import plants. Implant ports. After that, I after that I use the House Arcelio ritual, which I am loath to reveal to you, to free my mind of all errant thoughts, and then Then it is time to open my third eye and peer into the depths of the warp itself. Among the nightmarish visions, mirages, and creatures of the abyss. Only the light of the Emperor is the truth that will lead me from star to star, from system to system. Oh, the light, the guiding thread, so fine, it can slip from one's grasp at any moment. Cassia unfurls her hand as though dropping something. But you have nothing to worry about. The navigators of Har House Orsilio never lose their course. I guess that's fair. I was wondering about her being dogmatic, but she... Whenever she is looking into the warp, she is looking at a very physical manifestation of the light of the Emperor as the Astronomicon. So it would make sense that she would hold it and therefore him in extremely high regard. Why do you refuse red paint? Cassia gestures towards the servant standing beside her. Oof will give of his blood before the ritual, as always. Wow. Okay. You don't want red paint because you've got your servant's blood to use instead. Sure. The last navigator may do without these tricks, and you will as well. Uh, I shall ensure that all the necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum Navis. Cassie nods and thinks, I shall take my leave of you for the duration of the rite. I ask that you do not follow me. Few can survive the gaze of my warp eye when it is opened. Lord Captain, I will oversee the open channel between the Lady Navigator and the bridge, and may the Emperor's light help us all. The Voxcaster in the Sanctum Navis picks up the susurration of clothes, pious chanting, and the metallic clinking of implants. Then the serene voice of the Lady Navigator breaks the silence. Initiating communion ritual. Come here, Oove. The exultant ring of metal freed from its scabbard, the low sob of the servant, the rhythmic drip of liquid on canvas, the faint whispers of the brush. Go. Footsteps hurrying away. I see violet vortexes lashing an ocean with million, like with a million flails, and umber shadows spinning over the surface in a fiery dance. A storm rising above flo foaming waters, armadas drowning in the fog. The path from one end to another cannot be seen. And here, beyond the walls of glass, a daughter forsaken by her father yearns for her brother, and the sun's pale disk goes in tireless pursuit of her? No, of me. Its frozen rays lie like this. That spring is here. The light is deadened. The great ruler is gone. 
Beyond the walls of glass, a daughter forsaken by her father yearns for her brother. Sun's pale disc goes in tireless pursuit of her. I don't know. The Voxmaster recoils at Cassia's words and accidentally snaps one of the cogitator's levers. The panel beneath her fingers emits sparks and the Voxcaster falls silent. She quickly flips a series of switches and bows guiltily. My abject apologies for cutting off the broadcast, Lord Captain. I have never heard the warp speaking through a navigator before. The connection is restored now. It will not happen again. Voxmaster, see to you. See to it that you receive five lashes for this show of clumsiness. What is happening to Cassia? Cassia, you're right in there. Leave the Lady Navigator undisturbed. Continue the ritual. That is an order. I mean, I want to know what's happening to Cassia. Particularly asking the Voxmaster makes sense because she's been on the ship longer and would have a better idea of how navigators work. And also, we wouldn't be interrupting Cassia. But... Telling her to give herself five lashes feels a bit much. Ah, whatever. Voxmaster C that you received five lashes for this show of clumsiness. What is happening to Cassia? Soul shredding screams drown out the Vox transmission. The servants in the Sanctum Navis are howling and shrieking like wild beasts, moaning in pain, their throats raw from the strain, and then sudden silence. A dull thud of dropping bodies proclaims their fate. That all sounds bad. It it appears the servants were part of the Lady Navigator's right, as it was for her predecessor. I will arrange for the bodies to be removed from the Sanctum Navis after the ritual, or what is left of them. Rogue Trader, I fear that I have unfortunate news. Endless blackness is spread across the canvas, dividing what should be whole in two. And my sight cannot glimpse the light of the Emperor as clearly as before. I cannot turn around. My brush only draws me onward. The way is blocked. You hear a heavy exhale, rustling fabric and metallic clinking. By the Emperor's grace, the ritual was successful. Your vessel's temperament presented a challenge. Its cold steel grip did not allow me to breathe freely, even for a second. It was as if the depths of the ship housed not only machine spirits, but something other. Now we'll, we'll retreat from my chambers to recover my strength. Send for me if you have need of me. Lord Captain, congratulations on acquiring a navigator. Spare me a few moments of, of your time, please. There are several matters that require my, your attention. First of all, I want to report on the condition of the station Yurok 5. Had you opted to begin your visit to the RICAD system with a different destination, the system could have become critically unstable. Fortunately, the decision to immediately visit the representatives of the Navis Noblite bought us precious time. We can either send our forces to disassemble the station and procure technological components for our own vessel, or attempt to save as many valuables as we can. I will not stoop to pillaging, abandon the station, we are leaving. Gather any components that may be of use on the ship, or loot everything from jewelry to the vast to the very last manuscript. This gives us a plus two profit factor, presumably. If I'm reading that right, this does nothing, or at least it doesn't specify, although I would assume it would give us scrap, which is what's used to upgrade our ship. Is everyone, like if Yurik 5 still exists, but I guess the, the head person is dead. We've taken the child, Cassia, with us, along with all of her servants. I don't know who would still be on that station. So I guess it is basically a derelict station at this point. And if that's the case, then looters are going to loot anyway. Might as well grab the nice stuff for ourselves. So yeah, loot everything from jewelry to the very last manuscript. As you command, Lord Captain. Yep, gain two profit factor, run out to 12. With your permission, I would also like to remind you that we are still looking for an engine seer prime. Both the vessel and its machine spirits are in desperate need of oversight by an experienced tech priest. We are also missing some crew, and much more importantly, we have not yet located Heinrichs von Kallax. 
the right hand of the Lord Inquisitor. Now we know for sure he was not at Yurok 5, so keep this in mind when making any future plans. Why is it always business with you, Vizgis? Couldn't you sometimes just visit to tell me how wonderful everything is? Uh, I'm not going to bother with that. Thank you, Vizgis. That will be, this will be all for now. As it pleases you, Lord Captain. So let's leave the bridge. Oh, woodship management. We can put her on a post now. Um, let's see. So she has just swinging run. Same with Abelard. So either one could take the Supreme Commander spot. She has a 55 actually in the persuasion skill. So she is a better choice there. Shield Master. Is Abelard any decent of that? No. He is able to do... Apparently whatever this ability is. Which our ship doesn't have, so we can't use it. But presumably we could somehow upgrade our ship, however that happens, to get new heading available. Yeah, I don't know how we go about gaining experience or whatever 